Hello again, and it's time for another project. Nice, simple scroll saw project today. And all we're going to do is cut out this skeleton fish. And that's it. That's as easy as we're going to do today. These are ideal projects for somebody that's just starting out and maybe want to try a bit of scroll sawing on rough scrap wood so we're not wasting anything. Good little practice pieces, basically. You can see it's fencing wood. It's fairly rough. But if you spend a couple of minutes sanding it down, it really does come up nice and it's really cheap to purchase. Now, ideally, I would normally print off the image and just stick it on there with painter's tape and draw around it. However, I was struggling to get the 6 inch high, sorry, 5 inch high by 11 inches. So basically all I did, and it's the first time for me, is just to use baking paper. And you can buy this. 10 meters of this for next to nothing seriously and this is just like a roll of tracing paper and all i literally did was put the tracing paper the baking paper on top of my tablet or computer and zoomed the image up to the size i wanted and literally draw around it it is manageable and i got half half the image in and i literally just slid it across on the tablet and drawn the other half that way we've got the image sorted and we've not wasted any printing paper or printing inks. You will have to pin it on with pins because it is quite greasy, this paper. So you'll struggle to get any tape to stick to it. But literally, we'll pop it on there like we've done. Put our carbon paper underneath and we've drawn around it again. Now that's passed on the image onto our piece of wood. No problem whatsoever. And we can use this one on another project should we want to. Okay, so there's our image. Remember, Mentioned the sanding down, that's come out really smooth as that compared with the other side. So the image is on there now, all we've got to do is start cutting it out nice and easy. Three types of basic scroll saw blades for anybody that's new to scroll sawing. You get the standard pin blade. Now this is called a pin blade because obviously it has a pin at both sides. And that just clips onto your saw. Some of the basic cheaper saws have these. Clips at the top, you take up the tension. Blade towards you, remember, you want it smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That's how a saw cuts like that. That's ideal for today because it's all outside cuts, no problem. We can just cut around that happy days. If it's a smaller project with a lot of detailed work and you need to get into a small eye, not something this size, you would drill a pilot hole and you'll need one of these pinless blades. Obviously no pins at either side and that just allows you to slot that blade into a smaller hole obviously you could use a pin blade on this one because the eye is so big you will need uh, these come with your fancier newer saws that basically will just take pinless blades the, the more expensive ones do only take pinless my old drapper it will take both pinless and pinned however i need these adapter clamps they're a little bit awkward sometimes but once you get used to it no problem. And that's just a pinless blade in there and you would tension it up with Allen key on both sides and that hooks at the bottom, hooks at the top. You take your tension and you're good to go. Now in this one for me, I have a spiral blade. The good thing about the spiral blades, they will cut from any direction. So we could literally feed that in at the beginning there and just go from left to right with this wood and just move across like so. And that would be it all the way around till we get round to the bottom come around and do exactly the same in reverse no movement of the wood whatsoever these are ideal if you're doing larger projects where with the pin blade or the pinless one we would have to start there on the saw we've cut round and then we'd have to turn this wood to come down there and then we would have to turn the wood up there and then turn the wood again and so on and so on there's a lot of twisting and turning there's some fantastic people out there and they have it down to an art it's just something i struggle with so i'm happy with my spiral blades yet there's a lot of people that struggle with these so we can't please everybody okay let's set the spiral blade up in the scroll saw and we'll basically cut this one out
Okay, you can see from that we've made it all the way around with the spiral blade. And that's our general shape of the skeleton fish that we're going to use today. Now ideally you could have scroll saw the eye out completely just by drilling a little pilot hole and feeding the blade through, putting it back on your saw and cutting that eye out, no problem. I'm actually just going to route this eye out slightly, just lower it a couple of mil and we'll put some black paint in there. That way when I put it up on the side of the shed, I want to have the green of the shed showing through. It also have a nice black eye, which I think might just stand out a little bit better. Now, I have a lot of options. Like I just said, I'm going to put mine on the shed like that. You can actually leave it on the board. If you just wanted to feed it out slightly like this, and put some kind of backer on just so it stands out. That would give you a nice effect there. Or you can re remove it completely and put it on a fresh piece of wood. So we have plenty of options to go out. But for me, I'm just going to use a skeleton itself. So I'm literally just going to route out the eye now with a CNC bit. I use these on all my projects. This is a small shaft on this one, a Dremel size shaft, 3.175 millimeter. So you will require reducer collet, 6.35 millimeter, and that literally just slots in there like so. That will now fit your router. And they come in different degrees, 30s, 20s, 15s, and 10s, I believe. Now I'll use this to literally just to go around the eye, make it a nice crisp line. You could remove all that with the CNC bit, to be honest, such a small area. But just for this video purposes, I'll put on my N milling bits, and that slots into the same adapter collet as the CNC bit. So you literally just remove that, slot that in there like so, and then we'll use that to remove that inner the eye. Okay, we'll go on that quickly and get this eye done. Okay, you can see from that short little video, we've just done a full circle around the eye. That's as simple as it gets. I've now put in the end miller bit into the router and we've set it to the same depth of that piece of section I've removed. So we know when we slot that in there, it's going to be the same depth to remove out the centre of the eye. We'll do that next. Okay, that's it. That's as simple as that was, removing that eye. You could have used a Dremel or anything to route it out, just as easy. It's entirely up to you. I just prefer that eye, and it looked totally different. So we'll get some black on there. Black paint inside, and then we'll give it all a nice sanding down, and do a little bit of shaping on it. I'm not going to go over the top on this one today. We'll just curve it over, and then curve the rib cage in like so, and then maybe a bit of the tail. Okay, we'll do a bit of sanding now, and just get this generally tidied up. Okay, that's it. This little project is finished. Now, I said two coats of white on. I was going to leave it just wood at one time, but I do like the white against the black eye, and it will stand out better on the side of my shed. So, a couple of coats of that. You can see by that lovely shine, we've had a couple of coats of our crystal clear on. Just to give it a little bit of protection with it going outside. Now just remember, just rough fencing wood this, so you get what you pay for, but I'm happy with that. They're nice little easy projects that basically anybody can put their hand to having a go at making. So there we have it, one 
fish skeleton, five inches by eleven inches, little scroll saw project using spiral blades on rough fencing wood. Thank you very much for watching.